We've been told a lot of misleading or outright wrong things about the NGSW rifle. That it can penetrate the body armor of near-peer enemies like Russia and China. That it will have greatly reduced weight because of the cartridge and weapon technology. Advanced optics will give these soldiers the ability to effectively use the increased range of the weapon. We've also been told that it will have increased lethality and significantly greater range. The reality is very different from what we've been told. First of all, the 6.8x51 does have increased range over the 556, but it's clearly not the best round for increased range. In fact, there are many cartridges that are more effective in this department. One of the caliber studies that the government did concluded that an 125 grain 6.5 millimeter projectile would be the most effective. This shouldn't be a surprise because of the popularity of the very similar 6.5 Creedmoor, which people like because of its flat shooting and ability to resist wind. The real question here is do we need every soldier to have increased range with all the downsides that it comes with? Probably not. We've already tried the battle rifle concept with the M14. We know that it puts you at a disadvantage in close fighting because it's cumbersome and the ammo is heavy. That and the fact that it's 20 round magazines meant that you're outgunned by someone with an AK and 30 round magazines. Historically, most wars are fought at close range, as this chart from the Swedish Quad Support Weapon Program shows us. Putting our troops at a disadvantage for most wars didn't seem to be a part of the decision process, apparently. When fighting does take place at long range, those who are most effective are those soldiers with optics mounted medium machine guns designated marksmen and snipers. Giving soldiers new rifles doesn't automatically make them better at shooting long range. Shooting at long ranges requires a soldier to be able to accurately guess the wind speed and direction at the target's location. You can't do that with the NGSW scope. This soldier needs to have a Kestrel wind measurement device and a spotting scope, as well as the expertise needed to use them both. Simply put, new gear can't make up for lack of skill. The 6.8x51 round the army is going to use is not meant to penetrate body armor. It will be using the same bullet design as the M855A1 currently in use. Armor piercing rounds are constructed differently. They have hardened steel or tungsten cores that makes them much better at penetrating barriers and armor. We know that a armor-piercing 30-06 round will not penetrate the level 4 body armor our troops wear. 30-06 is only traveling about 200 feet per second slower than the promised 3000 feet per second velocity of the 6.8. Clearly, if the actual armor-piercing round won't penetrate the armor, there's no reason a non-armor-piercing round at slightly faster speed will. Even if you gave the 6.8 an armor-piercing bullet, it still won't be able to penetrate body armor at long range. It simply doesn't have the velocity or energy at long range to do so. By the way, our near-peer enemies, Russia and China, are using 5.56 type cartridges with relatively heavy bullets to gain greater range. These bullets are actually armor-piercing, but still can't penetrate level 4 armor. That doesn't make them ineffective, though, because most of your body is not covered when you're wearing body armor. This means that you can easily die from being shot in an unprotected area, like the legs. China's army, the PLA, bought 1.4 million units of body armor for their frontline troops. Before this, they were almost entirely without body armor. This body armor should be all made and delivered by the end of 2022. 
It's no coincidence that our NGSW program is supposed to get 6.8 rifles in the hands of our frontline troops before the end of 2023. China also recently got new service rifles. They should be concerned about fighting armored troops as all our soldiers wear armor. This would have been a perfect opportunity to make a new rifle to defeat our body armor. But the truth is, it wouldn't be practical to do so. Wars are generally won with having more bullets instead of less. When you switch calibers, all the stockpile ammo you have is basically worthless, and you have to start from scratch. The worst part about swapping calibers is that you can no longer have the same ammo as your allies. This is a huge strategic blunder because we can't supply usable ammo to Canada, for example, when they need it. If a significant war ever does happen, we had better be using 5.56 instead of 6.8, or we're probably going to lose. We are sacrificing actual advantage for theoretical gain. What I mean by this is that less than half of active duty army troops will be getting a weapon in 6.8. The vast majority of our armed forces will still be using 5.56, so when the time comes to mass produce ammunition, we will have to choose between 5.56 and 6.8. It will be far cheaper and strategically advantageous to rearm the army troops with 5.56 weapons than to make new 6.8 weapons for everyone else. Soldiers that fight in close combat will be the first to get the NGSW rifle, which doesn't make sense because it was designed for long-range fighting. The 20-round magazines, greatly increased recoil, and increased weight all make this rifle much less effective at close-range fighting than the M4. The advertised weight savings was comparing the 6.8 to the 7.62 by 51 which means that both the rifle and the ammo are considerably heavier than the M4. We are obviously being misled here because we're not replacing the M14, we're replacing the M4. I want to make this very clear that the government is solely responsible for all of these problems. Sig Sauer made the weapons that the government wanted and did an excellent job at doing so. Also, the increased lethality we were promised has a very specific definition. It's projectile velocity at medium range and projectile kinetic energy at long range, neither of which guarantee more lethality. It would be more honest and useful to just say that it has more energy and velocity than a 556. We have actual problems to solve though. We were unready for long-range fighting in Afghanistan, the M249 is unreliable, and we are unable to effectively shoot through barriers with 5.56. The first step of fighting better at long range is having more snipers, designated marksmen, and optic-mounted medium machine guns. We should also switch the 6.5 Creedmoor in the sniper rifles and DMRs, something that costs relatively little because it only requires a barrel swap. This is something that we can easily coordinate with our allies, and barrels wear out anyway. 6.5 Creedmoor has too short of a barrel life for machine gun use, by the way. We should keep using the 5.56 and 7.62 NATO, but we should upgrade to armor-piercing rounds. This gives us the same capabilities of our enemies and the same ammo that our allies use. We could even use the polymer cased ammo because it's proven to be usable in our existing calibers. The M249 should be replaced right away because we've known about its reliability problems for a while now. This would be an opportunity to have mounted optics as standard, decreased weight, and innovations like constant recoil which makes machine guns much easier to shoot accurately. What we should avoid doing is trying to throw money at complex problems to solve them, like what we did here with the NGSW program. 
Also, it looks like we are assuming that the next war we fight will be like the last war, Afghanistan. We should be using peacetime to innovate and adapt instead of going backwards. Specifically, we should be giving soldiers at the squad level more freedom. If everything is done by the rules, we will never adapt. We should be writing down what works and what doesn't, especially if we're actively fighting a war. What would you rather have, a manual written for the last war, or a manual written during the one you're in?